All right, let's go ahead and start. One sec, there I am. Okay, actually, I'm gonna move myself over. Always got to with these visual novels so I don't get too much in the way. Howdy do everyone, my name is Angie and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just gonna make sure that all my audio is working real fast. <laughs> don't wanna repeat of my last stream. <laughs> All right, it looks like everything is running okay. If at any point during the stream anything seems off or anything like that, just go ahead and tell me so I can try and fix anything. Uh, so I don't embarrass myself too much. Speaking of embarrassing myself, I just saw my cat walk in. <laughs> well, hopefully Oliver doesn't disrupt too much. <laughs> well, how's everyone doing? Hope your weekend was well. Uh, I had a very eventful one. Too eventful. <laughs> but it was pretty fun. Um, oh, my Discord's still on. Everyone probably heard that, huh? Oliver, why do you insist on doing this to me? <laughs> All right, well, my cat just decided to jump up on my desk <laughs> and run across is now, and is now sitting behind the wires. Because of course he is. <laughs> uh, this is pretty par for the course. I'm gonna have to kick him off, so, um... If you wouldn't mind just waiting one second for me while I do that. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Let's just switch this back on and here I am. Yeah, my cat really loves my attention. <laughs> and sometimes uh, he tries to get it because he knows I'll pay attention to him if he goes in front of my computer or behind it. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, I've had a very productive, I should say, meeting. Uh, very, uh, meeting, not meeting, uh, weekend. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking today. My mind's all over the place. But yes, I had a very productive weekend. A um, lot of things I'm getting done, a lot of things happening behind the scenes for this channel. Um, I know I did say last time that I planned on having chat uh, viewable, but uh, I kind of messed up when I was getting that in and like, it'll probably be in the next stream, not this one. I just need to like tweak a few things around <laughs> in order to get that in and actually like looking okay. <laughs> Because the version I had in did not look good, and it's just going to take me a minute to uh, get that in. I might try and do like a whole stream overlay, but uh, I don't know how long that will take me to do. Um, if I can't do it, I'll just probably end up commissioning it one time, or at least sometime. Um, anyways, uh, that's really all I had to say for now. I guess we'll just get into the game. So, let's continue where we left off. Um, actually, I say that. All right, I will go ahead and press continue. <laughs> Our character. <laughs> Hi, I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to have you back. <laughs> All right, just give me one second. I am going to uh, text someone real fast because they wanted me to tell them when the stream was going on. And I'm just now realizing I forgot to do that. All right, I said that, and now we can start. So, <laughs> everyone voted last time that like our character was uh, stung by a whole bunch of bees, apparently. But since we're going into the adult phase, I was kind of thinking we could, you know, have a glow up. <laughs> um, I do let chat choose a lot of what we do with character customization. Um, however, Okay, my Discord is going off because I keep forgetting to turn that off, so I'm sorry you guys are just hearing those sounds in the background. <laughs> uh, this stream is really going to be an all-over-the-place stream today. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, I was kind of planning on uh, having a little glow-up for Sky Rain here, or Rain Sky, um, whatever way her name is going to be. So... Let's see here. We did the... I still like, like, the eye shape and everything. And, like, scars are fine. Some people just, like, have scars. Um, 
But uh, let's see, the hair, we shaved it last time. I forgot about that. Let's change things up a little bit, shall we? Um, I do like like the flowing hair kind of thing. Um, we did like really long hair last time, which is nice. But let's see here. Kind of like I, the two tone is fine. Everyone seems to like want to stick with the two tone last I checked. But let's see if we could, let's see, this might be nice, and then have the back hair. Actually, let's go straight with a uh, two-tone, two because we can actually have uh, the two-tone front bangs. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. We can go with this. And now we can kind of uh, play around. Hmm. Actually, having short hair in this round might be nice. Um, I'll go around like a little bit more, see if there's anything else that sticks out to me. Oh, I think that's adorable. <laughs> Actually, I think like the small pigtails in back is adorable. I also like that messy medium. It's really cute. Hmm. All right. Actually, I think I am going to go with the uh, small little pigtails. I think that's adorable. Um. Let's see now. That's all fine. I do like the two-tone, so I'm fine with sticking with that. Um, we can keep the scars and birthmarks, but, uh, I think we got rid of our acne. <laughs> hmm. Maybe... Nah, we can keep the scars. Um. Alright, one of my friends, uh, said that their internet was down, uh, but she did say no glasses. So, no glasses. We can have earrings. That's fine. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think I think all of that is still fine too. I'll get rid of our braces though. You know, we grew up, uh, we would have had braces for a really long time if we had braces in this one. So I think I think we're good with getting rid of the braces now. <laughs> um, everything else is fine by me. Let's see, we can have rings now. Pattern, plain. Hmm. I'm not much of a ring wearer, but it might be kind of cool. Let's do a jeweled ring. Uh, don't need a headscarf. Um, nail length is probably fine. Ooh, we can do color. Make it blue, because that's my color. Uh, do we want a nose ring? Yeah. We'll give her a nose ring. I mean, like it's it's rain sky. Of course she she would grow up to have a nose ring. We're the the, the violent child, recovering violent child, but a violent child. <laughs> All right. All right. I think we're done, and that is our character for the adult route. Okay, so we are going to be at love now with a uh, cove. Um, that was decided upon already, but we are not going to be dating him just yet. We're going to have Cove confess his feelings to us, probably. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but that is the current idea. <laughs> All right. And I think we are ready from this front. We can go ahead and get started. Um, yes. All right. And we did have uh, some people want to change Cove's appearance for this. Um, oh, his hair is already at three. That works. And, uh, yep. Hair number three is already here. <laughs> and I believe glasses two was the other one voted upon. I'm going to go through the options real fast. I know one of my friends uh, didn't want him to have glasses and another person did want him to have glasses. So 
In order to decide this, I am going to flip a coin. Um, I don't have a coin. I will use whatever I have on me right now. All right, I'm gonna flip this and we'll see uh, what it lands on, heads or tails. Uh, if it's heads, then he has glasses. If it's tails, he does not have glasses. So here goes. Okay, it is tails. All right, so he does not have glasses then. I do like the glasses, but that's fine. Um, I think everything else is fine. I don't like dislike anything else about it. Oh, wait, I got a Discord message. You thought you'd be free of me. Oh, Space, I'm glad you got to join us. I was just talking about how your internet was down. Uh, all right, I think you're the only one that put something for uh, what he was wearing. So is there uh, anything in particular you wanted me to put on him? <laughs> I flipped a coin for glasses and we decided on no glasses. Um, but was there any like earrings, necklace, pants or anything? <laughs> If you can, uh, if you can type, I know that you're having some spotty internet trouble right now. Let's see. Earrings, of course. All right. Um, I think you have some, oh, I was about to say, I think you have some options, but we can't see them. <laughs> uh, these are upper earrings though. So I'll go with two because I like the upper earring look. Um, what shirt do we want? Let's see. Yeah, necklace too. Sounds good. Ooh, I like the anchor necklace. <laughs> it's my necklace. Look, we're matching. <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely he has that necklace. <laughs> Yeah, twinsies! <laughs> All right, so we can give him something for the le left wrist too. I like that one, the flowing, uh, the flowing uh, bracelet. It's nice. Let's see, what are our options here? Ooh, I do like that one, but I think this one is also nice. I just like that flowing down. Give him that little uh, dangly bra uh, bracelet. For the left or the right? <laughs> All right. Um, let's see on pants. Hmm, he has a lot of pants options, huh? All right, I kind of like the black pants. So I think I will keep him that. All right, I think we've decided on our cove. Um, oh, I forgot you can decorate his PJs. All right, let's see what PJs we can give him. <laughs> All right. Oh, we can only have the wing options. Okay. Um, well, I guess the uh, blue ones are nice because I like blue. Yeah, wow, the variety. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really give us a whole bunch of choices on that. <laughs> We can change his pant color too, but only two colors. <laughs> Keeping it blue because again, that's my colors. And swimsuit. Okay, I kind of want to give him the pink ones. <laughs> Green because it matches his hair. No, but blue, it's my color. <laughs> Um, so I, I think the pink one is nice. <laughs> All right, and then we have the formal. Yeah, so we can either give him the uh, <laughs> stupid little pink trunks perfect, right? So we can give him the pattern or no pattern. What do you guys think on this? I'm kind of like either one for this one, so you guys can just choose what you want there. I'm gonna take a drink of a uh, pattern. Okay, I'm gonna take a drink of tea. Uh, I made some right before I, <laughs> before I began, but obviously. <laughs> All right. 
So I think we are done with designing our cove for the adult route. To distract from the scarness wrist he got for having weak bones. Oh my gosh, we're already back on this. Poor cove can't catch a break. Um, right. I forgot about this. So this game has a very interesting uh, mechanic here that I always forget about in that uh, you can kind of decide uh, the in when it says intensity, this is like the amount of, uh, how to say it, like the amount of times Cove will kind of uh, take charge. So like, you know, uh, if you're dating him or whatever um, and he goes in to kiss you, uh, he won't necessarily uh, ask for permission as much with high initiative because it's assumed that you already uh, want that. Um, while at low initiative, he was not going to start anything. And so you can decide your comfort level with that, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so this lets the player kind of decide like how much initiative Cove is going to take uh, in a relationship. Um, which, like, for me, personally, I, uh, like it more on high. But, like, in any of your playthroughs, if you're going through this, uh, and you don't really want that as much, and you want, like, uh, not that many scenes where Cove, like, really, like, takes the initiative and those kind of things, you can set it to low. And, like, I think that's very nice to kind of, for the player to kind of, like, customize their experience there. Um, anyway, I'm gonna set it to high for mine. Uh, because I personally prefer that. Um, right. I thought there was like a thing that we could, uh, customize his personality a bit, but maybe that's only in the, uh, oh, I think I only pressed the personality one. Oh geez, I got distracted and I am late. Hey Josh, how are you doing? Welcome in. <laughs> also, how dare you for being late, man? I, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, you have to, I forgot that at the beginning you have to pick both for customization if you want to customize both. Um, and like, I forgot about that. And so I ended up just choosing his looks. Uh, can we make him a bit more deranged? Not anymore. <laughs> I didn't press to customize his personality. So we're not doing that. <laughs> we'll just have Cove uh, randomized. Anyway. Let's go ahead and begin this route, shall we? <laughs> the start of classes ended uh, ended the relaxed free days of summer. Um, I read that wrong. The start of classes ended... Nope, maybe I didn't. <laughs> the relaxed free days of summer. It didn't take long for you to get back into the swing of the school year routine. Schedules and homework became the new normal. Fix your mistakes. <laughs> Reload the safe. No! <laughs> Derek wasn't around nearly as much. With school and after-school activities, there weren't many opportunities for him to take the trip out to your neighborhood. Uh, that's sad. Sorry, space. Sometimes you'd hear that he was at a training camp or something like that, but you weren't always sure what he was up to. Yeah, no, Derek, we do see Derek again. Just not in this section. <laughs> um, but look, we can still keep in touch with him. We can still be besties with him. <laughs> so of course we're gonna take that. Does he remain a short king? You'll have to see. <laughs> the Jeremy kid did disappear after that summer and no one ever heard from him again. Where he went or what he might be up to was a mystery. You saw more of Miranda around. Since you had hung out with her on her birthday, she had opened up to you. The two of you talked regularly. She was the same towards Cove. After a while, the three of you developed a real friendship together. More summers came and went, like the waves on the shore coming in and out. In your second year of high school, someone new started to visit Sunset Bird, a sunny girl named Terry Brooke. She was a friend Cove made due to them both being ocean obsessed. Terry was more than glad to befriend, befriend you too. Someone close to Cove had to be good company, she felt. You were pleased to get along with her as well. Funnily enough, Terry was also extremely tight with Miranda, 
who she had known for even longer than Cove, the four of you were able to create a small friend group. <laughs> Damn, how do we use, use him to torture Cove with him now? There'll be another guy, don't worry. We have our next DLC character <laughs> that comes in this route. Cove knows other girls. Yep. <laughs> he does. We're all besties. <laughs> well, we can choose to be besties, I guess. As for your home life, the skies also had developments. Changing laws and public perception countrywide made it possible for your moms to openly wear their wedding rings without question. Bestie, sure, that's the word. <laughs> Though they had a wedding years ago, it was only recently that the union was officially recognized everywhere in the U.S. That was a good day, to say the least. Elizabeth came into her own and stopped being quiet as it stopped being quite as irritable. She'd no longer worry worried about about perceived childishness as she grew up for real. She didn't even mind being called Lizzie again, although most people called uh, people used Liz. She eventually graduated high school and moved out to attend college in another state. Our sister moved. <laughs> Uh, that's a little sad. I like- I- as much as I made fun of her, I did like Lizzie. <laughs> it was a lot for you to adjust to your older sister being gone. Liz never let you forget her role in your life- in your life, though, and kept in touch. No, we'll miss her. We will see her, don't worry. She's not, like, gone. <laughs> Cove's relationships with his family improved over the years. Kyra visited- visited several times after that summer, and things became easier between the two. He was also closer with his dad than ever before. You knew they talked more, and that helped prevent a lot of friction before it could start. And Cove only continued to open up to his parents and the rest of the world. He was so bright, he shone. He would willingly join conversations, make jokes, and put in an effort not to use overly blunt phrasing. Cove had shifted from preferring athletics to becoming more seriously studious as his, as his schooling went on. Things had shifted between you and Cove, but in a way that most couldn't see. After all this time, he wasn't just your neighbor. He wasn't only your friend or even a guy you were interested in. You were in love with him. You loved Cove. You knew that fact for certain. There was no one else you, you held these feelings for. It was strange to look back on it all. The future faded into your present, and then it was simp simply the past. Where's our dog? We'll see her. Don't worry. She comes in. <laughs> Even the most fundamental parts of your life couldn't last forever. You felt that the most pointed, uh, pointedly of the day, you, ine you inevitably graduated high school. It was over, and you would not be going back ever again. From now on, what came next was your choice. You would be directing your own life. Oh geez, when did that happen? <laughs> Love for such a disappointing specimen. He got better! Stop it, you two! <laughs> that was where you were current that was where you were currently, the summer after school had ended, the first summer of true freedom. What used to be a reprieve from the typical was now going to be your first step into adulthood. One fine summer morning, you took in what had become a very special scene, the whole family having a meal together. Angie with the spray bottle spritzing us every time we act up. <laughs> it's true. I should get like a spray bottle asset <laughs> and just have it for like every time you two insult Cove. <laughs> like stop it. Your big sister Liz still hadn't lived, uh, lived at home full-time for a couple years, but she arrived last week to spend the season here since it was an off, since it was an off semester for her. She will never let us <laughs> romance Derek like we deserve. Listen, I will romance Derek, okay? I will buy the DLC once we're done with Cove. <laughs> she wanted to make sure she was in town because you had, you had now also graduated high school. So who knew how much rarer these moments would become in the future? You watched on as Liz laughed good-naturedly over a comment Ma made. Her Elizabeth-only mindset had only been a phase. 
Nearly any nickname was welcomed at this point in her life. Strangely, even though she'd moved away, you'd felt closer to her than you had in a long time. You idly scooped up, scooped up more of your breakfast and chewed absentmindedly. Liz, yeah, it's really fun seeing how everyone grew up. She's chilled out so much, right? A lot of people tend to chill out once they grow up, though. <laughs> it's really nice how she grew up. I really like how her adult look form looks. <laughs> um, oh, right, we can pick this. Um, I am just eating whatever. We're not going to be picky. <laughs> and the meal you had reflected that. It included just about everything your moms had made, though you often made your own food nowadays. With Liz around, with, ah, excuse me. With Liz around, though, your parents made even more options than usual. Your sister had been vegetarian for a while, and they wanted to make sure she had choices too. Conversation had gone on idly, without you full, uh, fully taking in the words, until your ears were peaked when Ma start, started on a bit of town gossip. We can see how our moms grew up too! Oh, my phone's ringing. Spam. Not interested. Oh, but I do have a new text message, though. I always look just in case it is anything important, but it doesn't look like it. All right. Ah, oh, geez, the mom's changed too. Yep. Uh. <laughs> yes. Mom's hot moms. There you go, Bear. <laughs> We get to see how all of the moms have aged. I hope you're happy with that. <laughs> uh -huh. And so, that's how I heard the news. All right, all right, now stop buying the, the lead and tell us, what is this so-called news? Ma giggled as she cast a look ar across the table, satisfied that she had everyone's attention. Oh, whoops, double clicked. Well, it turns out the Donalds won't be re renting out the condo up the street as per Sunset Bird tradition for the first time in what meet and what must be nearly two decades. All right, a chorus of gas and shocked expressions were heard were had all around. After the initial shock, your eyebrows pinched. Ma may consider them by uh, may consider them by name, but you and Liz always viewed them exclusively as the mean old couple who would yell at anyone under 25 who crossed their paths. Fun fact, Angie: If you have a mouse on hand, you can scroll you can scroll well up to see the dialogue you accidentally skipped. Oh, um, I do have a mouse. Uh, I'm just not using it currently. I was using my tablet pen, uh, so that's good to know. If I remember to switch out to my, uh, mouse. <laughs> Your mom continued on with the story, spreading strawberry jam over a piece of toast as she did so. They've decided not to take big trips anymore. Friends and family will be visiting them at their home. Hmm. That's nice for them. Then- Wow. I actually don't know what to do for adult Liz. My, like, usual one was like this, but she's grown up and chilled now. Um. So, uh, huh. Hold on here. Hmm, that's nice for them. Have a good summer, mean grandparents with no grandkids away from us. Um, how did we feel about them? I mean, we didn't like them, clearly. Um... My usual thoughts now, as an adult, is usually along the lines of, I hope they're okay, even if they were mean. They've had a very full life. It's nothing to sneeze at. And you be nice, Liz. You don't want to end up like them, do you? You and your sister cracked smiles at the joke. Well. At least they won't be here to yell at my children anymore. Lonnie. <laughs> Lonnie. And that blunt comment got laughter from all three of you. Engrossed in conversation once more, you continued to chat with your family until the meal was over. Send Cove in front of the old computer, old couple's home. If he can't train his bones, he can at least train his skin. Uh, it's said in the little, like, uh, beginning that he's gotten better now. <laughs> uh, you don't want to end up like them. <laughs> Alone, unloved, abandoned in a rundown nursery. Oh. I hope, I hope it stop, 
acting- I hope it stops acting up for you too, Bear. Space. Whatever you go by now. And so we begin part three. As it went, once the food was eaten, the cleanup had to be done. Liz took the role of washing the dishes and passed them to you for drying and putting away. You had a set of cups in front of you that needed to go on the top shelf of the cabinets. Um, that's easy enough. I'm tall. Um, you're the reason I had to switch this. Switch to space, Angie. What do you mean? You were planning on switching it <laughs> anyways. I asked you what your new username was going to be, and you said space. <laughs> That's why I have, like, branded everything for you as space. <laughs> uh, the name for this step is giving me vibes of early 2000s rom-com. Yeah, it definitely is. I can see that. Uh, that was simply your lot in life. You'd always been vertically gifted. Um, I like being tall now, but I do wish I was kind of shorter. Admittedly. Um, but I guess for this, I will say I don't think about it much. That part of yourself was never something you could really figure out your figure your thoughts on. Liz shook you out in your in, of your internal musings. By starting up an impromptu conversation, she seemed to be voicing the thoughts that had been buzzing around in her own head. I have to say, going back for another semester this fall is pretty intimidating. You'd think after the first year or two, I'd have a handle on things, but no. You stole a glance at her, still placing cups in the proper place. I guess it's only fair. My first, my first round was pretty general classes, and year one of my architecture major was the basics. Now it feels serious. I have to actually know some things. The laugh she gave was, flipp was flippantly airy, but the way she scrubbed at the plates held more force than necessary. Um... I wish I was like average height. Would be nice to be able to use the upper shelves in the cabinets. Too tall to qualify for most of the beehive boxing brackets. <laughs> Uh, we actually grew out of that uh, now. Our um, our character no longer looks like that. She's an architect. What a star. What a genius. I'm Liz's number one fan. Yeah, I'm really happy for her. <laughs> okay, let's see. If you guys decide before me, then no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our championship belt. Yeah. We grew out of it, man. Someone else will have to take the reins. <laughs> All right. If you guys can choose before me, you guys get to decide uh, these things. I will let the major decisions be completely up to you guys, though. So let's see. Um, we get along with her now, so like, I think it's really cool that you want to be an architect. <laughs> Don't be too impressed yet. Wait till you see if it actually happens. But thanks. Your older sister's mouth quirked into a small smile. It'll be fine, one way or another. Oh. Oh, but I'm not trying to scare you away from college. If that's even your plan, what is going on with that anyway? Alright guys, go ahead. This is you. Um, what do you think for college? Do you think our character, uh, teenage, uh, our- Teenage, our character, would not have had a solid plan, I don't think. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't- we haven't really decided on her personality for her adult self. Uh, can't believe we're only washed out former beehive boxing champion. No job prospects, no future. We picked in high school. We picked- we peaked in middle school. <laughs> Not even high school, we peaked in middle school. <laughs> oh no. Are we still a nervous wreck? We're nervous around Cove, but uh, we don't have to be around anything else. So uh, that is up to you guys. I always let you guys choose what our personality is at the beginning. The I think. 
No idea. Beehive boxing with her life. We should be a planner. Okay, we turned into a planner. Sounds good to me. We've all, we've had a solid plan for a long time. You answered the question as much as you were able and willing to. Liz's smile grew more reassuring as you did. Hmm. You made it through 12 years of full-time education already. You can make your ideas happen, I'm sure. Sometimes it still felt hard to believe your public schooling experience was over in the end. What do you guys think? Did we really do well in high school or, are we still, or were we still a terrible student? In middle school, we were terrible, but things can change in high school. Liz is way too nice. <laughs> she chilled out. Awful. Terrible. All right. Um. All right. We struggled to reach the benchmarks, but made it. That's why we needed the plan. Yep. Um, I'm gonna guess that we didn't like it, based on that description. Um, so I'm just gonna say that, uh, I'm glad it's behind us. It was such a difficult experience, and it was finally finished. Liz picked up on the silence her question ended up creating. She decided it was time to make a clo closing statement on the subject. We'll fondly remember our middle school days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're a good girl, Rain. Do what's best for you, and we'll be here to back to back it up. Thank you. At that, Liz happily passed the final dish your way. She waved a soapy, soaked hand as a farewell and moved on to her next task for the cleanup job. You refocused on getting the last pieces put back where they belonged. You eventually moved on to a new chore, but that was interrupted by the sound of your cell phone. Um, all right. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do we have just the default ring or did we like change it or just have it on vibrate? <laughs> if it's me naturally, my phone is just always on vibrate. I very rarely turn the volume on. But we're setting up a uh, Rain's personality. So it can be anything you guys want. Same, but it's not you, it's Sky. Yeah. Sky has a silly ringtone. Gotcha. Her first name is Rain, I will say. It's Rain Sky. <laughs> All right. Silly novelty. You casually picked it up from the table where you had placed it earlier. The phone was a couple years old at this point, having been a, six having been a 16th birthday gift from your parents. They decided which model to get, but you got to pick the color. It was blue, 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 blue. <laughs> It's my color. <sighs> um, yes, we're going to decorate it. Which was um the shark keychain coat bought when you were <laughs> when you were a kid. It's too cute. Bye guys. <laughs> no purple, silver, sorry guys. <laughs> Blue is my color. <laughs> You were pleased when you finally had a prominent place to use the gift. The screen lit up as you gave the little device a swipe with one finger. You were informed by caller ID that it was Lee. You weren't surprised. See, we see her sooner than you think. Despite having busier and busier lives and not living in the same town, you still had a good relationship with your cousin of the same age. Especially once the miracle of the both of you having your own phones actually happened. She got hers first, though. Oops, something just happened there. How is your connection, guys? Is everything okay? I just got some interesting noises on my end, so um, hopefully that doesn't carry over. Okay, I'm looking, and it says that we still have good connection, so... Uh, fingers crossed? Just, uh... Let me know if it, uh, if it gets bad, okay? <laughs> T 
Tapping at the accept button, you answered her call. A familiar bubbly voice came through right after. Hi. Look at our phone. Bitch, you can come over and be the pillow we cry into when getting drunk and lamenting on, on lost youth. Right? <laughs> oh, look at the little charm hanging from the phone. It's so cute. I love like looking at that. Hey, Rain. Hi, Lee. I trust I'm not interrupting anything major. Only some cleaning around the house. Oh, then you're welcome for the call. A distraction from that must have been desperately needed. Um, yes, thank you, dear cousin. I like that. <laughs> it's like stutters for half a second and then was fine. Just rewound it and didn't repeat. So it could have just been uh, connection issues. Okay, that's good. Ollie, yep. <laughs> We get to see her in this. We actually get to see her in a few of the chapters, not just the prologue. <laughs> it's a pleasure. She giggled and you couldn't and you could hear the jangling of the jewelry she must be wearing. Nothing amazing is happening for me either. I'm bored and felt like chatting. My morning shift ended, so I'm free for the rest of the day. Woo! That's good. Um, do we work? That's the question. Do we have a part-time job? Aw, oh, she's a people <laughs> she's a people pleasure who sacrifice her own happiness for others without any regard for her own health already. Yeah! <laughs> Poorly. <laughs> uh, no one in this game can catch a break. Alright guys, it's time for you to decide if we have a job. What do you think? Like I was saying before, you guys can like choose all of the major stuff that happens. They must all break. <laughs> Can't escape capitalism, even in the sleepy dre dreamy town of Sunset Bird. That's correct. All right, we have a job. Like you, Lee had started dipping her toes into the workforce as of late. It made keeping in touch frequently even more complicated, but you both managed. What about you? It's been pretty normal. Cool. cool. That's you then. So, how's Mr. Cove Holden doing? Yeah, sure, we work. Only way to afford beer to drink while staring at her whole dirty photos. <laughs> That's right. The boxing champion. The BHAG boxing championship. I'll remember it well. There was a teasing, uh, bent... Uh, there was a teasing bit to her tone. She was never willing to let up on what was going on between the two of you. But that name was incredibly familiar to your ears. Cove, your next door neighbor, for the past decade at this point. All right, guys, this is our first indication that uh, we are dating Cove. So we can decide here, we're either still friends or we had started dating uh, off screen, I guess. Or we can confess to him later on in the chapter. Um, while you can go ahead and start dating him uh, from the beginning of this chapter, I do think, like, like not being able to see the confession at all or anything makes me a little sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can decide this. So I will let you guys decide what you want. Does uh, Close lock us out of the confession? Um, no, none of the options except for the last one, uh, lock us out of confession. Um, like if you say that he's your boyfriend, then you don't get to see the confession scene. If not that, so we can drive him that much matter. <laughs> um, all right. The two of you were close. That was all you could think on it. What you had was special, whatever it was. Are you even surviving without that boy being 10 feet away at all times? Or is everything right in the world again and he's back? Uh, and he's back? Uh, no, Lee, he isn't here. Just like he wasn't here yesterday or the last time you asked, or the time before that. Sorry. Oh, my bad. Can you blame me? 
Doesn't it seem like he should have made his grand return already? Plus, I want to visit soon, and he needs to be there too! You could understand where she was coming from. This was, uh, certainly outside the norm. For the past couple of months, and the last few weeks especially, Cove had been going to his mom's place in Nevada. Is Lee creeping on our toy? <laughs> I don't think so! <laughs> The two of you still regularly stayed in contact over text and calls, but still. Your mind began to drift back in time to all the prior trips he'd taken to visit her. Almost every year, he'd have to go away for a while, and then he'd be back. Um... I mean, how... How obsessed with Cove are we? <laughs> Like, how into Cove are we? We're in love with him, but... Good, we can't let uh, Cove get any emotional relief and we would be compelled to provide it. <laughs> We're, like, normal about it. Okay. Um... So... Uh, let's see. Probably, uh, you weren't a fan, but made do. Um, alright, what do we do? Do we send him letters, care packages, special treasures, keep an eye on his house, or um, we're incapable of doing anything <laughs> until he's back? That's such an answer. <laughs> no option, ignore him. I feel like none of these are normal. <laughs> no option to ignore him. We, uh, really like him, guys, if that wasn't clear. We, like, really, really like him. <laughs> Snail mail, got it. Cove made sure to mail some back to you, too. That's how it was in the past, but lately he had been trying to see her as much as he could before taking long trips to another state became too impractical to do. Shake my gun. No. no, you had it right the American way. <laughs> His part-time work could become full-time soon, or he could be moving somewhere else for school. Cope hadn't actually been entirely clear what his plans were after graduation. Cope was hesitant to speak on that, even with you. It couldn't be avoided forever, though. You both knew that. Well, Ahem. Maybe we should switch this up to a non-code-related topic. Yeah. The rest, of your co the rest of the conversation rolled on. Not much longer, though. Lee had to go, and you needed to finish your responsibilities around the house. The both of you exchanged goodbyes. Then you went back to what you'd been working on before the call came in. As you wrapped up the last of your chores, you were approached by Liz wearing a cheeky smile. I've got mom's keys. Want to go out on the tiny town to do some shopping in the real city? I can do that, if you want me to come. Good. Good. I'm driving. Um. Uh, <laughs> Alright, can we drive? Girl, you're the one who brought him up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was. Uh, shame we didn't have a hand in choosing that, Angie. I said that I wasn't, like, making you choose everything. She just wanted us to stop crying over our youth. She's adapting. <laughs> we have to put a stop to that. <laughs> of course we can drive. Alright. We can drive. Uh, do we like to drive? Um, let's see... So, we do like to drive. Um, wait, hold on. We love to drive so we can <laughs> go see Derek. Ah, uh, I see. Yes, more than we should. Gotcha. Alright, we like to drive. But, uh, this is the closest option I think we have to it. Go get your wallet and anything else. We're going now. With a nod, you made a quick detour to collect your stuff from the bedroom. You had money saved up from all the part-time work you'd done, 
as well as from gifts you'd received. Don't chug under the front end of the car. Don't stare at the grill too much. <laughs> I guess we didn't graduate from being the violent child. After making sure you both were fully prepared for the long haul to the largest city and the surrounding area, you buckle into the car. It was a smooth ride there, with light conversation about what shops to stop at and the radio blasting. The trip there breezed by, and in what felt like no time had gone, had gone from cruising down the road to cruising through the mall. Liz had her interest to check out, and you yours. Um, did we change our hobbies? I chose all of the hobbies last time. Um, and I chose all the hobbies that usually I did. Yes, sadly. So we did change our hobbies. All right. You had gotten into new things since you had grown up. All right. So we can choose stuff. So, um, I'm going to choose some things. But you guys, feel free to hop in and choose whatever you'd like as well. We can choose as many of these as we want. So, um, I wrote things. Let's see. Um, let's see. I like to watch <laughs> people, TV, movies, and we're a gamer. All right. Uh, we like to play video games. Do we like to play other games? Um, not just video games, but also like board games. All the games, gotcha. And, all right. Um, again, feel free to jump in. Definitely listen to music. I'm gonna say that I played the violin and that we listen to it a lot. Let's see. We also love to play games with Cove's mind and hearts. <laughs> hmm, I don't know if that's on here. <laughs> I'm like looking to see if we have an uh, if we have an equi equivalent. I'll say that we like to hang out with people. <laughs> I'll interpret it as that. <laughs> We can't be, uh, beehive boxing anymore, but we picked up a new one. <laughs> uh, oh, definitely. Can't not do that. He'll snap one day. Right. <laughs> um, I guess we can like sports. Is boxing on there? Not naturally. Hmm. It is a possibility. Watching them? Okay. Huh. Do we do we play any still or are those days long behind us like the beehive boxing? <laughs> not participating, not anymore. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I do like going to the beach. Um, looking at seashells, walking along the shore. Surfing is more of Cove's thing. I'm not gonna like participate much. Um, we like to read manga. That's it. <laughs> Spend time on art digitally. Um, sketching. And I'm gonna end it here. All behind us, all gone like tears in the rain. It fits our name since, you know, our name is Rain. <laughs> Sculpting. Oh, sorry. I went too fast on that. We can't go back. All right. And that was everything. When turning a, oh, when turning a corner down a, lo a new length of mall, your eyes caught on a little gift store. Your friends and family had recently given you many presents for graduating high school. Um. All right. So... We're gonna get something for Cove. You can choose different options with the rewind as well. No excuses. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. At all. I can't hear your message. Anklets. Get him an anklets. <laughs> all right, we can gift him something. Okay, 
We can gift him something or, uh, make something. But, uh, yeah, okay, let's, uh, gift him something. Gradu uh, graduation may have already come and gone, but Cove wasn't really around th then anyway. You'd keep an eye out for something good, though you might have something nice for him at home already. Oh, it doesn't let us choose. I thought it might let us choose. If we picked sculpting, we could have given him a bust of Derek. <laughs> oh my gosh. Eventually, the mall was explored in full, with every shop of note being checked over. Rather than going home, you decided to walk over to some smaller stores nearby. Liz had many thoughts on that topic. So? Honestly, malls are not a bastion of society. Even if smaller stores require extra distance, the brands are so much more... Then your sister abruptly stopped speaking and, wa and walking right in the middle of the path. It was a good thing no one was behind her. She seemed to entirely shut off for a moment. Liz? The attempt to catch her attention was unsuccessful. Something else had all of her focus. Before you could puzzle out what might be happening, she began to mumble out of the corner of her mouth. Rain, don't draw attention, but look. What? It could have been beautiful. It could have been. I'm sorry, space. I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> With a harsh whisper and subtle jerk of her head, she urged you once more. Hey. Look. You followed her gaze as best as you could to a bunch to a large bunch of colorful teens strolling down the same path. Okay. You uh, you faced back over to your sister with a confused expression and an unspoken question. What were you supposed to be seeing here? Rain, doesn't one of them seem familiar? She was practically bouncing at this point, so you looked at the group so you looked the group over again, and this time you saw what she was seeing. Amongst the collection of strangers was was brown hair, gray eye gray eyes, and lots of freckles. Not Jeremy. <laughs> That's Shiloh! Our Shiloh! From when we were kids! Yep, that was definitely him. I can't believe it! He's honestly just just there! That's hilarious! That's incredible! Oh, but how do we talk to him? We'd have to pull him away from all of those other people, and what if I'm wrong? Your mouth opened to reply, but she cut in with her with her own answer to the question. I've got it! I'll shout the name Shiloh, and then we can act like it wasn't us. If he responds to that, we'll know without a doubt it's him. Rain, keep an eye out to see if he looks. Ugh, oh, this guy. It could have been Jeremy if they weren't cowards. <laughs> I think if you like Jeremy, you'll want to talk to Shiloh again. <laughs> just for- just as a tip. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, sure, let's try it. <laughs> Likely without even hearing what you had to say, Liz put her plan into action. Shiloh! She gladly projected the voice across the way and then put on an act of casualness, turning her head away from the scene while brushing at the, brushing at the shirt of her, of her dress. Tell Shiloh he owes you money. <laughs> you can't be high box anymore, but we can be a boogie for the sport. And without you and wouldn't you know it, Shiloh placed a losing bet last month. <laughs> in a supreme awkward moment, you could only stand there as attention in the area shifted to the two of you thanks to your sister's shout. But as the many startled sta startled bystanders who became altered by your presence, one of them was the boy from a distance, his large eyes met yours. He looked. A wide grin took over Liz's face. She pushed the rim of her sun hat up and away from the from her face while swishing back around to greet her old friend directly. Shiloh. Waving, she stepped a bit closer to uh, to express her intention to meet. Without really closing the gap, she wanted him to come to her. Who you presume to be Shiloh looked surprised at at the call out. 
He stole a quick glance at the crowd he was with and hesitantly glanced back your way. He was trying to double check something. Liz remained steadfast with her gaze trained on him and ultimately he broke away from the rest of them. After a light-footed jog across the brick path, the young man pleasantly presented himself in front of Liz and you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I like your hat. Just that simple greeting had Liz giggling. Hey. Hello, I'm not sure if you remember this, but I'm Lizzie and that's Rain. We were all friends when we were little kids. His already wide eyes grew even larger, their gaze darting between you and Liz. His previously chipper demeanor faded, in, faded into something delicate. Mm, I'm really sorry, but I think you have the wrong person. You, you could tell not, you could tell not being instantly recognized was going to make this exchange more of a challenge. Still, Liz was undeterred. Oh, good, she's still the same old Liz. I'll talk, no gift. <laughs> hey now. It was a long time ago. We were really young. I get why you feel like that. However, I'm positive I'm right. You're exactly the same. The face, the freckles, how <laughs> generally you try to, to phrase things. They're even still, you're even still wearing a hat. Instinctively, he looked up to his headwear and creased his brows, not making the connection on why the hat meant something to her. Okay. We know each other, okay? Liz really likes Shiloh, huh? It was her best friend when she was a kid. He, like, uh, was always around her and was, like, obsessed with her. <sighs> An uneasy smile settled on him as, as a silence followed Liz's speech. He was picking his next words carefully. And then the quiet was obliterated by a new voice bursting into the conversation. Shiloh, what are you doing? The rest of the group already left. A field trip is not a vacation. We're on a schedule. Startled, your head snapped towards the path. A distinctly unhappy individual with piercing magenta eyes, dark brown skin, and a sharp jaw stormed your way. He's so little. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, she has her own cove. Maybe we can take notes. <laughs> He carried a cloud of authority with him, despite looking like he wasn't even 18 yet. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to ditch. Shiloh, whose name was now officially confirmed, gestured with a hand to add to the explanation of his absence as the stranger watched impatiently. They thought they recognized me as someone they knew, but it was a tiny misunderstanding. Liz theoretically, as well as literally, put her foot down at that, stomping in frustration and getting more childish the longer she was around her childhood companion. Well, never mind. He's too rebellious, not broken enough. We'll do better. <laughs> oh, Shiloh is fascinating, grown up, I will say. Um, I mentioned this earlier, like in uh, past playthroughs that both uh, Shiloh and Jeremy and the boy that we don't get to see with the magenta eyes are all in another dating sim by the same creator. <laughs> and they're kind of like the problem group is the best way to put it as. And Shiloh has to be the most question mark out of that group. <laughs> Putting it lightly. Come on. We do know you. Shiloh merely shrunk in on himself. The tone he spoke uh, with was pained. Sorry. You honestly couldn't tell if he was apologizing for the upset feelings of your sister or the palpable dissatisfaction of his new acquaintance. That in itself was very Shiloh-like. Oh, you know him? Is that it? The stranger spoke in a dismissive, scowling, uh, scoffing tone, as if the words sounded so absurd to him it was almost amusing. Almost, but the sternness of his demeanor quickly re reinstated itself. Well, do you know me? I'll tell you. I'm someone who has been forced against his will to be aware of what's going on in Shiloh's ridiculous personal life for a year. If the two of you had any importance in his general day-to-day -to -day existence, it would have come up by now. 
Don't bother trying to exaggerate any trivial connection you might have. It's not good enough. He's with us, and you'll survive without him. Now stop loitering in the road. It's rude. Excuse me? <laughs> We're the rude ones? The high-strung ranting got an audible gasp from Shiloh, who finally started to speak up again in defense. N Nate, that's really mean. It's also true. We're leaving. With the declaration, the, unofficial in the unofficially introduced Nate indigently spun on his heels and walked speedily towards where the group went, completely confident that Shiloh would follow behind. Man, we're trying to steal a middle schooler. <laughs> <laughs> He's in high school. <laughs> uh, oh, people can sure have bad attitudes, huh? Why can't they just try to get along? It's not hard. Don't worry, though. I bet you won't have to deal with him again. And I'm sorry, I can't stay to talk to you, but I hope you have a really nice life. Bye! Bye! And that was it. His final parting words given. Shiloh left the two of you behind to catch up with his own life that he had to go live. Not with that height. <laughs> Liz watched his exit, stunned, only to frown when it hit her that he was really gone as quickly as he appeared. It happened so fast that you hadn't even been able to get a word in. She sighed. All the energy she built up releasing with the with the breath. I could have told him his last name was Fields. His birthday is October 30th. That would have proven it, but no. Wow, Shiloh grew to be dumb. <laughs> you, uh, you snorted the words in disbelief at how dense he had been. Aren't you going to go after him? Liz merely shook her head, pushing off childish thoughts. I think we can leave it there, thanks. He's in middle school. He's in the middle of high school. I was about to, was about to go with what Josh said and make him a middle schooler. Ah. <laughs> I think we can leave it there, thanks. He's in the middle of, high of a high school field trip, and it was already enough being able to see him again. There's something reassuring about witnessing firsthand that he's still out there, enjoying his part of the world. <laughs> Thanks, Angie. You're welcome. Glad to validate you. <laughs> Though if given the chance, I could definitely have a few words with him about the company he's got. She laughed, but you could tell there wasn't much humor in it. She was mad at that guy, even if she was happy to let Shiloh go. Maybe they're only with each other because of the trip, and it's not usually how things are. Right? True. We can only hope the same for him as he did for us. Have a nice life, Shiloh. Uh, good luck out there. You'll need it. Liz smiled at you. It had the self-confidence you knew so well from her. Come on, little baby sister. It, let's finish our own trip. And she has lost her chance to have her own Scott Pilgrim romance. <laughs> yep, basically. Yeah. No matter how either of you really felt about the occurrence, it was something you simply had to accept. People you you know just disappear and reappear in the most unexpected ways. The two of you enjoyed what remained of your outing until it was time to return home. By the time you arrived back, the sun had already begun to set. You arched your back as you stretched your arms toward the ceiling. While it had been a good day, it had, it had enough activity to cover an entire week. Liz tried to hide a yawn behind her hands. You weren't the only one feeling worn out. I'll be heading up to your room. I mean, the guest room. Since mine stopped being available as soon as I was out the door. Her tone was light. She'd had quite a lot to say on the subject when you'd first taken over her the bigger room after she left for college. But there have been many trips back home for her since then. Oh good, we did take her room. Yep, we did. Send her the other game Shiloh appeared in and let her reconnect there. <laughs> yeah. The room hasn't been hers for years. It was more of a rundown, a uh, running joke now She uh, that she continued to bring the topic up to this day. Uh, huh. 
I don't see your name on it. You win it after clearing out every possession I left behind. That's right. I don't leave evidence behind. A small laugh was shared between you and your older sister. You better believe you'll be back in the guest room when you've got your own place and we're both in town for a visit. Uh, uh-huh, sure. Your sarcasm won't save you here. I'm taking that as an agreement. She flashed her familiar grin and couldn't, and you couldn't help but feel glad she was back around, even if it was temporary. Uh, man, can't believe we sold all her stuff for money, hardcore. <laughs> Just like my parents did when I moved out. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> I took all my stuff before they could. <laughs> With that, she plodded off to the spare room. You were ready to do the same. Moving into a new space was your first opportunity to decorate from scratch. We get to design our room! All right, guys. Have at it. This is your choice. Uh, I don't know if Bear dropped out or not. Or if she's just not typing. Or it's space. <laughs> but whatever you guys want the room to be, I will let you have free reign over it. So as a little example, green completely changes the room. Or we have purple. And this is how that room looks. Uh, how much like do we have left before Hot Topic closes? <laughs> Okay, and then yellow. Personally, I think I like, let's see. Yeah, I like the space yellow has, but I like the colors of blue more. Cycle the options, of course. So yeah, these are the only ones that change like the room layout. But so like if we do blue, the extras we can include is a little basket over here. So that can happen. Uh, we have the windows, so we can have books over here, and a little shell to the right over here. Um, and we can, or we can have plants. I forgot that we can cycle through. So we can have stuffed animals instead. Same, yellow is best for space, but blue has the better colors. Yeah, I think so, personally. Can extras change? No, it's the same. Okay, so for walls on blue, we have po like ocean posters we can post. That's it. We have more ocean photos we can have. Or um, if you press this, it changes the entire setup. We could have never ending plant graveyard. Yep, basically. Let's see, more ocean photos. We really love the ocean. Uh, for right, we can have a little space poster on the wall. Or we can have lights going through. And if you have if you have lights, I don't think... Yeah, you can do photos. But some of the photos take away the lights, like these. You can have all of that with this. Yeah, some of the options do take away. We need a double... Uh, we need a double bed and soundproof walls for reasons. <laughs> exactly! So yeah, and then the floor... We can have this little bench over here, or a guitar over there, or we can have a plant, a little sofa thing, or a telescope. So yeah, those are our options for the blue room. It does change with every room. Uh, the blue pictures don't work well uh, with the wall color. They blend too much. Yeah, a bit. Ah. So. I guess yellow was the other one that we like agreed like space wise was really good. So for extras for this one, I didn't see what appeared. Oh, it's over there. Uh, we have books over here, books and tissues, or we have trophies on the shelf. Uh, try yellow because that can show blue better. Yep, uh, it does change, I will say. Uh, looks like we can only have trophies. So on the left, we have books that appear. More plants, more plants. Or we can have that shell, another plant, 
and the plushie still. On the left, we can have a bulletin board. We need them to stare at. <laughs> Actually, yellow, definitely, uh, definitely yellow. We need those trophies. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so we have a bulletin board, more pictures. That's all for that side. Oh, we can have these uh, photos back. And then we have the lights options. And then on the floor, we have a volleyball, only a volleyball, or the telescope and only the telescope. Random Easter Island head. <laughs> all right, so yellow, so we can have our trophies. Let's see, what was extras one? Oh, right, the tissues. And we have our trophies. On the window, let's see. We can have plants or books. Plants one or multiple plants. And on the right, we can have a shell, another plant, or plushies. Uh, as cultured as we can make it. Gotcha, gotcha. As cluttered. Conch? You want the conch? Gotcha. All right. Let's see. Do we want the photos? Or do we want the bulletin board? Is the question. We can also have the photos. Or go with the lights. Whichever you guys like more there. Personally, I think I like the lights a little more than the photos, but either one works for me. And then we have the floor with the volleyball and telescope. But we only get those options. We don't have like a whole bunch of options for that one. All right. Lights, mood lighting, got it. All right, this is our room. This is how things will be. You are really satisfied with the, uh, with the feel of your tiny part of the world. As your thoughts drifted, you tried to bite down another yawn. It was no good. Your bed was now lodged in your mind and all you could think about was collapsing on it. You trudged up the stairs to your room. Stepping inside, you closed the door behind you, blocking the rest of the house. When you turned back around, you realized you were not alone there. Comfortably perched on the windowsill was someone very familiar to you. Cove Holden. He just let himself in. <laughs> That's my thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Hold on here. He got in again? Yes. <laughs> um, huh? <laughs> Just that little response. You know those anti-bird spikes? Can we get those? <laughs> he became the most beautiful deer in the whole wide world. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's so cute. I love the ponytail. <laughs> surprise. His tone was easy and relaxed. It certainly was a surprise. You hadn't expected him to be within the state, never mind your own house. He hadn't answered how he had how he had suddenly just appeared back in Sunset Bird. Though, to be fair, you had been so astounded, there hadn't been much of an opportunity for him to chat with you. Um, oh, if we break, if we break him, he might gen gently murder us in our sleep. I mean, I guess he knows the way in. <laughs> Thankfully, Cove was only waiting for a good moment to start and began to explain. So... I was about 15. I got in about 15 minutes ago. No one was home, so I figured it. I'd come in my usual way. The window. A small smile had formed on his face. 
You were still staring at him, unable to blink in case he disappeared. You could still barely believe that he was really there, mere feet away from you. I left my bags in your backyard. I hope that's alright. <laughs> that was when you truly understood. Cove had come straight, uh, straight to you upon getting back to town. You were his first port of call, taking precedence over above all else. Where's the alternate world where Liz walked in here first? <laughs> right? <laughs> that would have been so funny. <laughs> Even though you hadn't been in when he called, Cove was in Cove was ensured that he'd see you at the earliest opportunity rather than allowing his plans to change. Um, are we still a nervous person? Is the question. We're too nervous to confess our feelings, obviously, but are we still a nervous person all around? Hmm. I mean, we could have grown up a little bit, chilled out a little bit. Only towards Cove. Gotcha. We're nervous towards Cove. Um. The realization made you bashful. It wasn't news that you were special to Cove, but the way he prioritized you above everything else was something that flustered you. Cove dropped from his seat on the windowsill, landing lightly on his feet. He made his way over to you, the smile still resting on his face. Um, him climbing into our window might have something to do with that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that would make you a little nervous. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can't believe my eyes. It's the most amazing man in the world. <laughs> or troubles back and down. Uh, let's see. Uh, we could also just be too shocked to speak here since he just, you know, was waiting for us in our room. <laughs> Second from last. Got it. Um... All right. How do we act towards him? Are we still the violent child or just like, do we, do we chill out a bit? Punch, punch, punch. <laughs> All right, punch his arm. Your fist made light contact with his upper arm. As you brought your, as you brought your hand back down, you spotted Cove rubbing the spot you just touched. You wondered if he was even aware he was doing it. The only sign of acknowledgement acknowledging the action was his cheeks, which were tinged with pink. The whole world, uh, whoops, the whole world is a little, uh, the whole world is a little much, Rain. His voice was light, modestly batting away your compliment. It only served to underscore how much he deserved it. Aw, I don't think it is. I missed you. Even if he hadn't said it outright, you would have gotten the message from his body language. Cove was grinning widely, his raised cheeks burying, burying his eyes, which gleamed like hidden gems. But he looked at you as if you were the most exciting treasure of all. Was it a good trip? Yeah, I had a great time. Cove told you about his trip, how, about how his trip had gone. His mom was doing really well. She had a project in the works that she was really thrilled about. As a result, Cove was going to be sticking around in Sunset Bird for the time being. Things were settled as much as they ever could be. With Cove back once more, you felt at ease. Cove stretched his arms out over his head, his eyes on the window and the world beyond. The sun had set while you'd been busy re reuniting. Well... I should probably get my stuff and see Dad. He glanced over to you with with a familiar expectant look. Is his mom hot yet? <laughs> I don't know, we're just gonna have to ask space. <laughs> Wanna come with me? Um, sure. I can go over for a little while. Cove began to head to your bedroom door. We follow after him. We <laughs> make him do a piggyback ride down the stairs. The two of you casually went down to, uh, to the ground floor of your house. 
In all the excitement of Cove's return, Johanna even remembered the gift he'd prepared for uh, for when he got back. It would be the best. To, it would be best to give it to him now before he left your house. Can you wait here for a little while? I got something for you. Cove's eyes widened as he tried to conceal a smile. He toyed with the collar of his top. Really? I mean, you didn't have to do that. You nodded with some eagerness, trying to imagine how he'd react when he actually saw it. <laughs> no, do the piggyback. Ah, oh, sorry. We'll be lucky if Liz doesn't see him. Uh, hey, Rain, how did he get into our house? <laughs> okay, I'm back. I miss anything? Yeah, Cove broke into our house. We walked up to our room and he was just there. You also missed out on designing our room. We actually got to design our entire room. <laughs> and so you missed out on that. Hmm. Um. All right. Did we buy something for Cove or uh, the gift we chose? Had it been something you could buy? What was it? When is he not breaking into our house? Nice, what'd you pick? We picked uh, the yellow option because it had the most space. And then we uh, have a telescope and a volleyball in a room and a bunch of trophies we can look at. Nothing you can buy. Gotcha. It was. I guess the orange shell he loved when we were kids. It's the only option we have. <laughs> we made him a macaroni art portrait of Derek. <laughs> You quickly went up to your room to collect the shell, knowing exactly where to find it. It had been housed in the same box since you were a little kid, after all. Taking great care, you extracted it from the case. Though it had been a long time since you'd taken it out, the grooves were as familiar to your fingertips as the opening line of your favorite song was to your ears. Nothing we can set, sculpt sadly, especially a certain jock's face in stone. <laughs> Cove had admired this shell ever since he first saw it, declaring it to be the best of all of your treasures. Despite that, he'd never accepted your offer to take it. You hoped that might change tonight. You closed your hand around the shell, not wanting Cove to see it until you were ready and headed downstairs. When you were back in front of Cove, you cautiously lifted your arm, your arm up. He looked on curiously as you unfurled your fingers to show him the gift. I want you to have it, please. Cove stared down at the familiar shell nestled in your palm. His mouth parted. There were no, no words that came out. He drew his eyes, to, eyes up to meet yours, silently, and found the answer to whatever question he couldn't speak. He put his hand over yours and broke the silence. Okay. It was as quiet as a whisper. His fingers were as gentle as his words, brushing against your palm, and he took the shell from your grasp. He cradled it carefully against his chest and smiled at you, his eyes bright. Aw, oh, this is not as fun, fun a gift as I hoped. <laughs> you can give him some really fun ones. Like, if you kept the 20 from his dad, then you can give it to him. <laughs> you can give it back to him as a graduation present. <laughs> like, there are some real fun options you can do. But, like, we didn't keep the 20, so we can't do that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's also, uh, I got this my first playthrough of it, but you can, uh, if you tell him when you're a child um, about the deal uh, and you don't accept the 20 back, then his dad will rip it so both you and Cove have a piece. And then you can uh, also give him that half of it uh, for a graduation gift. And, like, I got that, like, one of my playthroughs. <laughs> I'll keep it forever. <laughs> I love his facial expression. <laughs> yeah, you want to know something even cuter? Um, if you're an adult and you're in love with him and you guys, like, are already, uh... You accepted the 20 and didn't spend it. I didn't accept the 20, so we don't get the option at all. There is no $20 bill. Um, also, we didn't confess it. We didn't confess that we um, uh, took the deal when we were kids. And you have to do that when you're a kid in order to get that option. 
Uh, but the cuter thing with that whole 20 is that um, in another playthrough, uh, yes, that was an option. But there's no option to spend the $20 bill. So where, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> um, but yeah, cuter option, uh, I think. Uh, but we didn't, again, we didn't choose this path. So uh, it's not available to us. But, you know, we can gift him that 20 and everything. That's still on the table. But, uh, you know, if you're uh, dating him and uh, you're an adult and you're thinking about marriage... Uh, he'll propose to you in various ways. And one of the options is that he'll write it on the $20 bill and give it to you. <laughs> so he proposes with the 20. <laughs> uh, Cove is like disgustingly cute and I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to reading now. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's kind of cute. It is. It's adorable. <laughs> I'm trying to choose a different option in mind, though. Now, that's what I call getting some bang for your buck. <laughs> that's good. Make his dad cringe at the wedding speeches by telling that story. <laughs> oh, poor Mr. Holden. <laughs> All right. Cobe, uh, uh, re reverently laid the gift safely on the counter, but he didn't turn back to face you once he had ensured it was secure. Though his face was angled away from you, you caught his eyelashes fluttering as if bat batting away tears. His throat bobbed as he swallowed bubbling emotions. He's crying. He's crying that we gave him the shell. <laughs> He's so cute. What, what the heck? You knew that Cove could be sentimental. The gift and all of the memories and feelings tied up in it seemed to have taken a toll on him. When he began to sniffle, you felt the need to reach out. Cove? Rain. I can't. You just... Rain. I don't know what to do. He forcefully scrubbed at his eyes, like he was trying to push the tears that threatened to spill back in. Oh, Cove, it's okay. You don't need to cry. Dude, it's just a shell you turned down like a dozen times. Come on. If you cry, you might break your cheekbones. <laughs> oh, man. No. <laughs> Do you need to cry? No. <laughs> Nevertheless, tears had begun to spill down his cheeks. Even as he wiped them away, more took their place. Thank you. His voice qu quivered as he spoke. Cove scooped you into a hug, pressing you so tightly against his chest that your breath escaped in a short squeak. He burrowed his face against your neck. His shed tears damp on your skin. You hugged him back. You're such a crybaby. Cove let out a steady breath. It was far removed from the shaky gas that had accompanied his sniffles. The tears had dried. His eyes were a little red, but open and at peace once again. He smiled, fully recovered from the emotion that had overcome him. Does he still cry if you gift him an anklet? I don't think that's an option, unfortunately. He cries, though, I think, whatever you get him. You're really seriously too nice to me. You smiled back. You're worth it. Cove brushed his hand against the pale ghost of a scar on his arm. He was at a loss for what to do now. The clock ticked away, counting the seconds of silence. Once you'd had a chance to settle your thoughts, you figured you'd tell Cove the intriguing news. Um, I saw Shiloh today. Huh? Shiloh? Cove repeated the name, his expression blank. From when we were kids? Cove pondered for a moment, then snapped his fingers. Oh, he was that freckly boy from that first summer, right? The one who moved? Why not? Why wouldn't a boy his age cry at the memory of the first time he confessed his <laughs> to his best friend? <laughs> uh-huh. I met someone called Shiloh. He looked just like Shiloh from back then. Well... You waved a hand, acknowledging the passing of time and so forth. Cove nodded understandingly. He didn't remember me. 
Uh, nope, that's not Cove. That's me. He didn't remember me. Then he had to go. Cove frowned. That's, uh, hmm. I don't know. Too bad I missed it. Though, you knew him better than I did. That was definitely true. Not only had Cove known Shiloh for a shorter period of time, but he and Shiloh had never g quite gotten along. Not memory. Fetish. Whoops. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got what you were meaning. Not that they were enemies either, just kids who were only ever together because of other people they both knew. I wonder what Shiloh's up to these days. I don't have any idea. He didn't say much. Oh. oh, well. That was everything you had on the news news items, so you moved on to the next big update. Also, you know the mean old neighbors? The ones who would always yell at us? He cringed, recalling those particular, particular memories of back in the day was not pleasant even for someone as nostalgic as him. Yeah. They're not coming. They didn't rent the condo this, year, this summer. Cove's jaw dropped. You didn't blame him. The elderly couple had been an inst- 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 ah, had been an institution for as far back as you could remember, long predating Cove's arrival. Even now, as a teenager, you found your neck prickli uh, prickling as you walked by their condo, half expecting a scolding for breathing the wrong way in the vicinity of their vacation home. It was strange to think that that was coming to an end. Wow. Cove blinked, clearly struggling with the idea in the same way you had. I don't see- I didn't see that coming. People being gone, people coming back, it feels like I've missed a lot. Whoa. Uh, whoops. It didn't work! Bear! Space, the log didn't come up, even though I used the mouse! <laughs> This must have been a busy summer, busy summer already. Mm, well, you haven't missed the fireflies. Uh, that hasn't shown, they haven't shown up yet. Well, that's something. And we better not get left behind. There's still stuff to do. You nodded. The two of you headed out and traced the most familiar path you'd ever walked. The trip across the road over to Cove's house. It seemed that no sooner had the night begun that it, that it was already at an end, and the dawn of a new day was soon upon you. Go throw rocks through their window one last time to give them something to remember you by. <laughs> oh man. No, the log doesn't come up. It rewinds. Ah. In the text box. Oh, I see. It still didn't do that though. The next morning, your belly was full of breakfast, and you were in a pleasant mood. You hoped the rest of the day followed suit. It might be... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know the reason why the my mouse didn't work like that. I'm still showing it's on. So I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. Oh well, doesn't matter much. Later, you were meeting up with your friends, Cove, Miranda, and Terry, to go into town. It was all on short notice, but... That was because everyone was just so excited that Cove was finally back home. Got a scroll up? Oh, maybe... Um... No, I'm pretty sure I scrolled up. Hmm. I don't know. Clearly you're not allowed to have fun. I guess not. <laughs> just like I'm not allowed to have fun. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> Having a nice dr daydream? You blinked, pushing all your thoughts away and returning to reality. Your mom was watching you with a teasing smile. All right. So, what's on the agenda today? I'm meeting up with some people. Well, I hope you and your friends have fun. Don't get into too much trouble. Literally every half second. Aw, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Her smile is as creepy as ever. Aw! <laughs> Our mom is beautiful, okay? Take it back. <laughs> she winked at you. You knew both of your moms wanted to enjoy every bit of summer before the big changes started. I'll try. But before you go gallivanting around the town, could you bring the mail in? I'm finishing up putting these dishes away over here. Alright. Thanks very much. 
And we get to see how Cove's dad changes. Her hair is getting gray too. Yep. As soon as you are outside your front door, you couldn't help but see Cove and his dad standing around in the road. They noticed you too. Hey, hey there, Rain. Hey, good timing. You should come join us. Um, we can give him a nookie again. <laughs> I don't know. What's our? I want that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> What's our usual greeting for Cove? Noogie, all right. <laughs> we gave him a noogie. In a flash, you hooked your arm around his neck and pulled him down to receive your finest noogie. His hair is stuck out in funny places when you released him. Cove wouldn't quite meet your eyes when he pouted and attempted to fix his hair. Chuckling, you watched as he exhaled his embarrassment away. You noticed Mr. Holden was taking in the scene of you and Cove with a self-satisfied smile. Cove followed your line of sight and shot his dad an unimpressed look. Hey, Mr. Holden, can we renegotiate re that $20? <laughs> For a moment, Mr. Holden seemed like he had a thought dancing on the tip of his tongue, but he decided to keep it to himself. So, so what are you up to today? You held up the envelopes in your hand. I was getting the mail. Right. And we're meeting some friends in town town in a while. You looked at Cove and nodded in agreement. Sounds like a plan to me. Yawning, Mr. Holden stretched his arms over his head. My boy and I have just been waiting around to see what the new neighbors are like. It was definitely his idea. I don't know how you're not interested in this. It's big news. Besides, I'd on it'd only be polite to greet the new folks in town. Hmm. Are we interested in seeing the new neighbor? This, I will say, is our uh, DLC character for $5.99 if we ever feel like revisiting it. I'll let you guys decide uh, how you feel about him while I have a small water break. Someone new to make Cove jealous? Yes, all right. We are interested. Okay, yes, I'm dying to see the newcomers. Rain gets it. Cove raised an eyebrow. Really, you two? Yeah, it could be anyone. The beach attracts all kinds of people. Cove thought about your words for a few seconds and then nodded understandingly. I guess. I guess. Mr. Holden took one more glance at the currently vacant building and sighed dramatically. When he turned back to you and Cove, his whole body seemed deflated. <sighs> There's no sign of them, and I still need to head over to work soon. Cove gave his dad a few reassuring pats on the back. Okay, I promise to keep my eye out. I can text you if anything happens. Really? Of course. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, only until I have to meet up with Terry and Miranda. Would that still work? With a wide grin breaking out, out on his face, Mr. Holden looked absolutely thrilled to have his noisiness enabled. That works. He moved, to a, he moved to firmly place both hands over Cove's shoulders, fixing his child with a firm stare. Son, you are my true ally in this world. Mr. Holden stood up straighter, letting Cove go. He looked <laughs> reinvigorated. Okay, with that settled, I'll go make some money. That's always been the one thing I do best. Mr. Holden headed off to the off to the garage with a big wave goodbye. Cope smiled the whole time and you both watched his dad leave. Um, of course I like Mr. Holden. I mean, I'm like saying that uh, we already liked him in, in middle school, so I still like him. You had for a long time. <sighs> Excuse me. As soon as he was out of sight, Cope sighed lightly. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, just not looking forward to waiting. Guess I'll be hanging around the street for a while. Uh, <laughs> we can just leave. No, we want to see too. Uh, curiosity about the new tenant was getting the better of you, and you figured that the wait wouldn't be too much longer, and besides, you just couldn't leave Cove. Really? 
Of course, I like keeping you company, remember? Uh, that's the thing he does best. No wonder he tried to private hate your old <laughs> Yeah, we gotta meet the new guy. Yeah! <laughs> he stared at you a moment, smiling softly and thinking about his response. Me too. I like that too. Cove put his hands on your shoulders, gripping you solidly, but not enough to hurt. His eyes fixed on you just as firmly. He was serious. Rain, you're my true ally in this world. That got a fair amount of chuckles from you. He grinned, the stoicism fading into amusement. Thank you. You're always, you're always good to me. <laughs> you're lucky to have me. <laughs> Teasingly, Cove raised an eyebrow. You're the most lucky guy in all of Sunset Bird. Luckiest. For a moment, you weren't sure if Cove was laughing at your declaration or at or that you momentarily forgot the word luckiest. Either way, you, either way, you didn't mind. The smile on your face reached his eyes and it made you feel ele electric. And then he let you go. Cove stepped over to his front por porch steps, lazily taking a seat and leaning back on his arms. Our watch begins. Nodding in agreement, you joined Cove on the front porch steps. You both sat there in a comfortable familiarity as you settled in for the waiting game on the new tenants. The neighborhood was quiet and you sighed contently, closing your eyes and feeling the light breeze. The only sound you could hear was the familiar jingle of Cove's wind chime. After all these years, it was still there, adorning the entrance outcropped of his house. Eventually, you both perked at the sound of a car. A taxi followed the noise, turning onto your street. Cove's eyebrows raised at the sight, and he sat up straight straight on the stoop. Good, good, we're isolating him from healthy relationships. <laughs> he already has other friends. He's talking to other people besides us now. Oh. This has to be them, right? I hope so. You leaned forward, sitting on the edge of the front step. You couldn't wait to finally put an end to the suspense and get a look at the new neighbor. The taxi pulled to a stop, and you expect, and as you expected, in front of the new, in, the now empty condo. It was on the same side of the street as your house, a few buildings further up. Without getting to his feet, Cove tried leaning and tilting his head to get a view of the pas passenger door as it opened. The single occupant exited the cab. <sighs> Huh? You could feel what Cove was in. You could feel that Cove was in the moment. He's what? Yeah, he has other relationships now. Not just us. <laughs> after the after the last uh renters, is this new visitor was definitely not exactly what you'd expected. It was a young man, had had to be close to your own age. He was dressed fully in an electric black, white, and gray outfit. Even his side-swooping hair matched the scheme. The only other pop of color was from something that couldn't easily be fashioned into submission. A pair of dark brown eyes, which you caught when he looked over at his audience. Dodgy pasta. <laughs> Why did we let him have friends? We were fueled. We were fuels to only break the people in town. <laughs> the Duncan Rapa reference. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this boy is trying so hard. <laughs> I'm loving the reactions to Baxter. <laughs> yes, this is the third, the second DLC boy, the third love interest. <laughs> Uh, and we will be seeing him a lot. <laughs> oh god, I don't know how I'm gonna do his voice. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> did this guy get spit out by Deviant? <laughs> Is this dude gonna drag us into a school trial? Does he bleep it? What's his affinity for small, horrible bears? Just do your monokuma voice. <laughs> no one will get that joke because that video isn't out yet. <laughs> Spoilers, I guess. 
No, I, I do actually know <laughs> Monokuma. <laughs> I do actually remember like how his like how his voice sounds, but like mimicking it is not uh not easy. Hello folks, who might you be? Um we're the neighbors. The smile already prominent on his face curled further. It was cocky, but you didn't get the impression it meant something adverse. Hallelujah. You and Cove shared a familiar look with one another, bewildered even further. I have to go. Have a good night. You have a good night, too. Thanks for stopping by. It's been an editing limbo for years, but I know the truth. <laughs> I'm trying to get it done. <laughs> it's an hour-long video, though. <laughs> the color-coordinated man left it there. However, with a firm click, he shut the door of his ride. Then he turned his back to you to retrieve a large, unsurprisingly, black suitcase out of his trunk. Continuing on with his own business, he strolled forward and lightly tapped on the driver's side window with his knuckles, asking for them to roll it down. When it opened, he, he leaned down and rested his arm on the edge. You assumed he was thanking the driver for getting him there, considering he slipped them a tip during the brief chat. They shook hands, and then he pushed himself up and away from the taxi, with both arms, giving the driver room to leave. The taxi pulled away, rolling carefully down the road and out of sight around the corner. The new renter had officially arrived. He left his suitcase on the ground, out of the way of the street, and sauntered over your way with the confidence of someone who had been invited to join. Cove finally stood up to greet, his, to greet this person. You followed suit. I'm Baxter Ward. It's excellent to meet you, neighbors. Thank God for Rain's deductive skills. <laughs> right? <laughs> you were standing on the side at the side he was approaching from. When Baxter got close enough, he offered his hand to you first. Um, so are we going to try to make Cove jealous with this guy? Because if we're trying to make Cove jealous of anyone, I think that uh with Baxter's um, flirtiness, I guess, is the best way to- He's overly friendly, I should say. More- more so. He's very overly friendly. Um, if we'd have an easier time making him jealous than with Derek, who was, uh, a middle schooler. <laughs> so what do you think? Are we overly friendly to this- with this guy, too? Normal? Or just, like, not interested. <sighs> While this is decided, I'm gonna take another water break. Thinking about it, Space? Here's the thing. Okay, I'm listening. Oh, I'm out of tea now. His design really makes me feel like he's trying so hard to be a playboy. <laughs> we could just ditch Cove for him. <laughs> but I don't <laughs> like his vibe. <laughs> I will say his vibe does change. <laughs> it is incredible. You're correct. <laughs> you didn't think it was possible. <laughs> to be lamer than go. <laughs> it's sad because Baxter tries so hard to be friends. <laughs> he tries so hard. I think like, uh, I had mentioned earlier that like I was pretty confident that everyone would like, uh, Derek. But I didn't think that same energy would carry over to Baxter. <laughs> and I was right. At least Cove broke his bones on accident. This guy would just break his bones just a bit in. <laughs> oh no! Baxter, no! <laughs> oh, Baxter's not that bad. He's not that bad, okay? 
I'm not gonna be like openly hostile to him, all right? I, we're not like that. We're, he's not Jeremy, okay? <laughs> Derek has an earnestness in his every action. This guy just feels fake. He is. He is, in fact. <laughs> if we're, like, being honest here, like, yeah, he, he's a little bit. He's, like, 75% fake. <laughs> um, so, like, I'll just, like, shake his hand. Very civil. <laughs> there is honesty in Jeremy's hostility. You are correct. There is honesty there. <laughs> But yeah, so we'll just like be like, eh, about him. He hasn't done anything like downright awful yet. He just seems fake. So we'll just be like, eh, okay. Baxter gripped your hand firmly to give a satisfying shake. I'm Rain. Hello. It's nice to, uh, it's, uh, nice to meet you too. Hey, Rain. I'm quite keen on getting, on. Um, wow. I'm quite keen on getting to know you better this summer. We could be good friends. Um, <laughs> this man with live her bonnet sport. <laughs> well, have you seen that Monokuma hair? <laughs> From your other side, Cove made a sudden sputtering noise. And you are? He lifted his hand out to Cove next. Cove shook his hand, still eyeing Baxter carefully. <laughs> Cove sees through it. <laughs> I'm Cove. Baxter's whole demeanor lit up for unknown reasons. His eyes shone as he studied Cove a moment. Now wait, is that a nickname or your real name? It's just my name. Cove spoke mildly, having given that explanation many times in the past, but it clearly charmed Baxter all the same. He tossed his head to one side with a laugh. Maybe we don't need to get close to him <laughs> to get Cove jealous. <laughs> Really changing your tune now, huh? <laughs> your parents know exactly what they were doing. I can't imagine a more fitting name for the face I'm seeing. Cove, that's gorgeous. I... It's... it's not really. <laughs> Wait, am I spelling a new plan? <laughs> Cove off to Baxter, then we run in the sunset with Derek. Actually, with how Cove's reacting to him suddenly using Baxter to make him jealous seems feasible. Oh, this has absolutely rancid vibes. <laughs> I'm loving the I'm loving the Baxter reactions. <laughs> it is very funny. This is basically how I thought you guys would react to him. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, <laughs> the answer of, that's a lot considering you're talking to a stranger Baxter. <laughs> or we can just be like, yeah, no, it fits him really well. Our boyfriend, not our, not our boyfriend yet, I should say. <laughs> Baxter, this is literally our first conversation. <laughs> can you like chill? <laughs> Seems right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it wasn't intended to be mean more than it did. Uh, it wasn't intended to mean more than it did. I like your name, but you don't have to mind that. Cove gave a slight nod in, in recognition of Baxter's words. I'm patiently against stepping on anyone's toes. He chuckled to himself. It seems like there was some extra meaning hidden in those words, and you notice that Cove raised an eyebrow, picking up on that too. Um, actually, maybe Rain, Rain's jealous now that he's flirting with Cove. <laughs> Baxter flirts with, like, everyone. But, like, I don't know. It's a little weird. You'll see. Baxter didn't even open his eyes to see your faces, to know that he had some filling to do. He stood up straighter, striking a slight pose with the position of his feet. I'm a ballroom dancer, hence the phrasing. Oh, I don't know much about dancing, but that's pretty cool. It's not hard once you get the basics down. Cove didn't look convinced at all. Baxter took that as a cue to keep talking. Wow. Well. Uh, were the broken bones and beehive boxing 
uh, boxing club to join, you have to either break your bones or box a beehive. <laughs> oh no, someone else is showing this lame boy attention. He's so prickly and unimpressive. I never thought I'd have to worry about this. <laughs> Poor Cove. He grinned in a way that was rapidly becoming familiar to you. If either of you are ever looking for a partner, I'm available. Cove frowned at the overt forwardness. I, uh... I'll, uh, thanks. I'll pass. I think. <laughs> I like how he can be like, I'll take you up on it. <laughs> That's what I was saying with, like, you know, if you are trying to make Cove jealous, Baxter is the easier option because even if you don't have the DLC, you can just outright flirt with Baxter like crazy. Um, no wait, he was supposed to be desperate for us our entire lives. Don't tell me I have to actually try now. <laughs> it's okay, Cove doesn't like Baxter. <laughs> he doesn't like Baxter at all. <sighs> All right, well, I'm seeing a general dislike for Baxter uh, altogether. Where is Derek? Can we tell him we've got the marriage promise with a nice jock in the next town over? <laughs> right? Yeah, we did make that promise, didn't we? Um, Let's see. We are good at dancing. I think we did establish that. Um, but I'm getting a general vibe that the chat does not like Baxter currently. So, uh, I'd rather not seems to be the appropriate option here. Baxter nodded understandingly and let the subject go. After that, there was a lull in conversation and Cove attempted to fill it. So... Um, what made you decide on Sunset Bird? Ah, uh, yes. Well, my parents rented a condo, so I had... I had a place to stay while I'm off for the semester from college and not living in the dorms. There was a playful glint in Baxter's eyes as he continued. Honestly. Ideally, they wanted me to spin they wanted to send me somewhere that wasn't too exciting, but luckily for me they picked the wrong street considering the two of you live here. Um, we must assert our dominance. <laughs> like we can give him a chance. No. I don't know. Actually, True Bear, we can flirt with him, but we must make our spirit already known. Interesting. So, we can only flirt with him if it's to show superiority. Gotcha. <laughs> Jesus, dude, can you tone it down for like five seconds? Uh, apparently not. Baxter is uh, forward. Very forward. We could have shown him the truth of the universe with our dance moves. Oh, right? We're a champ. Cove was practically reeling over how Baxter found a way to fit comments like that into every single topic thus far. Actually, no, don't flirt with him. We don't want Cove picking up bad habits. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? You don't know us, but you talk like you already do. Cove spoke, firm yet genuinely confused, and Baxter smiled cautiously. I don't feel the need to keep words of praise to myself, and when I say something, I mean it. See? Plus, what's the point of spending my off semester alone? The best part of being somewhere new is getting to interact with new people. I can't believe we have common ground with Cove. <laughs> yeah, Cove is just straight up like, why are you doing this? <laughs> And I honest- and am I honestly the first person who's acknowledged your attractive and intriguing people? True, you're hidden away in a tiny tourist trap, but still. Baxter crossed his arms. After studying your faces a few more seconds, he decided to continue. Am I only trying to score a hookup or get rom a romantic fling started by saying these things? No, that isn't the point of speaking well of others. I was raised better than that. Though, would I be fussed if that's where my words led to? Also no. <laughs> Thanks, Baxter. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am flexible, not a surprise, hmm? I can back off with the 
I can back off with the lines if you don't like the attention, but I would like to be friends if we can. <laughs> the bro calm down. <laughs> this guy sucks for making us have to share common ground with Go. <laughs> oh man, I'm loving the Baxter reactions actually. They're really funny. I kind of figured you guys would dislike Baxter, but it's only getting funnier. <laughs> Cove wasn't sure how to respond. He glanced at you and he continued to look at your face when he spoke. Thanks for answering. I'm not interested in any of that with you. Um, maybe not the friend, maybe not the friend thing, but the other part. Um... <laughs> you probably annoy a lot of people. <laughs> um, I also find it fun that you can be like, huh, I find it pretty entertaining. <laughs> okay. You're just gonna be mean to him. <laughs> oh, man. His, com uh, his confidence remained rock solid despite the jab. I haven't had that experience yet, but anything is theoretical, theoretically possible. Shifting his weight onto his other foot, Baxter tried to move forward. So? so, since you were both already out here, did my arrival interrupt anything? Um, there's new blood in the water, my <laughs> brother, I'm a tiger shark. <laughs> he didn't take any insult by our comment, though. <laughs> Definitely not. I'd say break out some mace, but if this is how he talks to everyone, he's built up an immunity. That's right. <laughs> um. Let's see. Um, we can just tell him like, yeah, we were we were waiting to see the new neighbor. I guess that's you. Um. Or just be like, yeah, we weren't doing anything. Ha. Huh. Um, I guess we can just be honest that we were waiting for the new neighbor. Hmm. We can't laugh conspiratoriously because the conspirator would then be Cove. I think honesty is the play. Yeah, I think so too. We wanted to see who was coming to the neighborhood. That's why we were out here. Baxter laughed at that. Immensely pleased with your response. I'm getting a reputation in this town already. Not bad. Well, if either of you are free, I'd be thrilled to hang out this summer. But we can save the schedule talk for later. I should get my things inside. He gave a small nod of, it, of the head and flashed you both with a dazzling smile. Goodbye. Goodbye for today. Bye. Cove gave a small wave as well. Bye. Baxter then turned on his heels and strolled back back to, to his suitcase, picking it up and bringing it into his condo. You and Cove were silent as Baxter unlocked the door and disappeared inside the house. With him completely out of the scene, Cove let out a long breath. Well, I don't know how I'm going to explain that guy to my dad. Hey, so about those anti-bird spikes? <laughs> what are we gonna do, place them outside his house? <laughs> You burst into a fit of laughter, trying to imagine the conversation. At least the job is done. We saw the new neighbor, and now we can go meet up with Terry and Miranda. Yeah, we should get going. You gave Baxter's condo one last glance over your shoulder. Um, not interested in him would be a correct response. Um, he gave a pretty bad first impression, I also guess would be a correct response. Or, I guess the last one too, judging by how chat is acting. Uh, you guys can just decide, I guess. Is Baxter just the guy that we're like, ugh, Baxter? Or, <laughs> um, do we just feel like, eh, about him? Bad first impression, all right. I will say that Baxter did grow on me in this game, uh, but it wasn't, it was like after my first playthrough. We need someone and guess. 
Uh, don't worry, he's at your wedding no matter what you do. <laughs> I'll let you guys interpret that how you want. <laughs> you actually experienced it firsthand, but you were finding the, the last several minutes of your life hard to believe. You couldn't imagine what this summer was going to be like with Baxter here, and you weren't sure how much you wanted to actually see him again. Um... Yeah, I can't be the only one at the bridal party when we marry Derek. <laughs> wow, I didn't think he could get get worse. <laughs> Turning your attention back to Cobe, you pushed all thoughts of Baxter aside. You both started making your way towards town. A little while later, you and Cove reached a main street in town. All of a sudden, you stopped walking. Hmm. What's wrong? I think I heard my phone. You dug your cell phone out and looked and looked at it with a satisfied grin. There was a new message. Before you could read it, you were distracted by a small amused noise from Cove. His head his head was slightly tilted to the side as he carefully looked at your old keychain. I can't believe you still have that. Um, well, someone was crazy enough to get it for me, so I may as well use it. I like that response. Uh, don't let him see the strap too late. <laughs> yep, he comments on it no matter what. <laughs> you grins, looking at the keychain fondly. He laughed, remembering the day he bought it for you. That's nice. I'm actually glad you like it. He looked back at you with a playful grin. Especially since it cost me a whole $6.00. That's like $30 in kid money. His matter-of-fact tone had you laughing deep. You couldn't face him without start starting all over again. Smiling, you refocused on the task at hand. You opened the new text from Miranda, and all you saw was, I can see you. Immediately from where you stood, you started swiveling your head around. You couldn't spot Miranda anywhere, but she did send you more messages. Haha, <laughs> I see you looking. What are we choosing? Um, I think this is such a cute interface, by the way. Um, let's see. Um, where are you, I guess would be the response. The message was sent, and you were back to looking around, scanning for any sign of movement and familiar faces, but they were still invisible. Cove looked at you carefully, raising an eyebrow. <laughs> Just the screaming. Yes, we love Amanda, of course. <clears throat> so I guess we're laughing at the ridiculousness. Uh, man, it just occurred to me Cove's dad tried to bribe a country club kid with the $20 bill. Yep. Yeah, just start yelling. Yeah. Cove jumped a bit with your sudden outburst. He raised an eyebrow and looked at you carefully. Uh, what's happening? Before you could even begin explaining anything to Cove, you both snapped your attention to the yelling from across the street. And there you saw Miranda and Terry coming out from behind the back side wall of the grocery store. They both started waving widely to draw even more attention to themselves. Cove took a step in their direction. Grinning, he put his hands around his mouth to better project his message across the street. Oh, uh, like, yeah, Mr. Cove's dad. Uh, thanks for the napkin. <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> hey! Laughing and arm in arm, the girls stepped on stopped only to look both ways and then rushed across the empty street. Hi. Hi, I hope you weren't waiting too long. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddies. Hi. Uh. I'm amazed. How did you appear out of nowhere like that? They started giggling again. Terry glanced at Miranda, wondering what their story wondering what their story should be. Wow, she grew a whole two inches. Yep, that's right. She stayed short. Also, we get the new character, Terry. I think Miranda grew up to be really cute. <laughs> Ooh. It was magic. Gesturing in a vaguely whimsical manner, Terry went along with the decision. <laughs> and magicians never reveal their secrets. Ooh. That's fair. 
Terry then closed the distance between her and Cove and crushed him in a painfully tight hug. You're finally here! It's been so long! What took you? He did his best to eke out a reply from his chest with, a chest be uh, with his chest being compressed. Uh, awesome, can you make Cove disappear? <laughs> no, not allowed! Unacceptable! Sorry. Sorry. Eventually she let him go. Terry looked at him with a beaming smile, but Cove was distracted, rubbing his arms. Standing there, Miranda shifted her weight to her other hip. She watched Cove patiently with a bashful smile. Welcome back. Thanks. It finally felt official. Everyone was together in one place. From here, you weren't sure how often you would have another afternoon like this again. They didn't they didn't either. So? Cove? Terry poked Cove square in the chest. You're gonna have to get me your schedule by this time t by this time yesterday. No way. Not really possible, Terry, but I can say as soon as I know. So far, work hasn't said anything, but I can tell you I'm busy with orca activities. When, when Cove wasn't at his part-time job or pursuing his academic interests, he volunteered for the Ocean Rest Restoration California Affiliation, ORCA. The group focused on cleaning up beaches and removing pollution from the ocean. Cove always loved the sea. It didn't surprise you one bit when he started getting involved with them. So we're allowed to join that. Or we don't. Uh, but like, ocean cleanup is so important, guys. And I love the ocean. Obviously, I'm a fish, but I love the ocean for so many reasons more than that. So uh, even if we don't decide to do it, ocean cleanup is important. That's my, uh, that's my little segue here. Anyways. Is she intruding on our territory? <laughs> nah, they're just friends. She has a love interest, actually. Dear God, do we actually have competition for co- <laughs> No, no, no. She actually has a different love interest. <laughs> anyway. Uh. <laughs> do you mean we sure can join? Uh. All right. Are we the ones that introduced it to Cove? Or uh, was it our thing and we're just like, Cove can join? Or uh, did we join after learning it? So Cove joined first. That is the question. I'm letting you guys decide this part. I'm just gonna like sip on some water while you do. I will say, I have noticed chat seems a little delayed. Um, let's see, after we need a new reason to live, after our passion fell through. All right, gotcha. Co joined first. You joined Orca 2 after learning of it. Their big smash event for the year is coming right up, isn't it? Yeah, that's not m that. There's not that much more to do before then, but I'm kind of looking forward to the fundraising part. Push. Hopefully we can pull it off. If anyone can do it, it's you two. And even if it and even if it goes really bad, it'll still it'll still look good on a college application at least. Uh, that's true. Hey, hey guess what else? We don't have to stand here and, and to to say stuff. Let's go. I I would like a meal now. Perking up, Cove nodded in agreement. Um, I might be a bit behind. Maybe. Um, I've noticed chat is like lagging a bit for me. Um, so like it could also just be on my end too. Excited by that plan, you smiled. The four of you headed into town, happily chatting the whole way. The only decision left to make was where exactly to stop and eat. The rest of the afternoon and evening passed by in a blink of an eye. When night fell, it was time to head home, and you parted ways with Miranda and Terry. You and Cove reached your neighborhood without without event. It was late enough that your out-of-the-way street was dark and silent. Let's see. How much stamina do we have? Hmm. <laughs> Cove can also just give us a piggyback ride. Um... <laughs> Let's see, are we dragging our feet the way there? Let's see. 
How do I feel about... Huh. Not much anymore? Got it. He's piggybacking us. Got it. It was a long day, out and about. You appreciated that you could rely on him to make things more comfortable for you. You tightened your grip on Cove and turned your head ever so slightly, peering at his face out of the corner of your eyes. You wondered why he felt so distant to you. It was out of character. For a while, Cove silently stared ahead and left you alone with your own thoughts. It surprised you when you did hear his voice all of a sudden. He still wouldn't look at you. It feels weird coming back to the neighborhood and trying to get into things like they're the same. And they're not. They've changed. They're still changing. Your mouth felt uncomfortably dry all of a sudden. It was true, the things that kept the people you knew together were starting to disappear. Each person had to make their own priorities and their own path now that it wasn't set for them. You thought about your own immediate future. You were still set on that plan for yourself. You wanted... All right, guys, what do we want? What's our future plans? Go ahead and decide. <laughs> we have to train him. We trained Lee, yet Cove is resisting. We need to fix this. <laughs> Things have changed so much. An old couple left. A humanized Sonic OC moved in. <laughs> oh, Baxter, no. Obviously, we have to go to school. Got it. Um. So let's see. So, are we working part-time at all, or are we just focusing on school? So we can meet people who aren't Cove. Got it, got it. But still, are we getting a job full-time? Got it. Full-time and school. Oh, go to school full-time or job part-time. So, uh, school full-time. Got it. Oh, we can choose multiple. Never mind. Do we also have a full-time job? Or do we work part-time? Uh, we can work if we if we want to, but country club moms also just bankroll us. That is true. Um, so I guess we can just do like part-time, you know, full-time. We need to speed run heart failure. Oh no. All right, you've spoken. And like, do we focus on time that's not school or work? Do we have hobbies still outside of that? Full time for all for doing all three, man. That is quite a lot. Absolutely not. Got it. And that was the basics. For your career, for your career, you thought you'd. What are we doing? <laughs> do we find a company? Do we work online or do we do contract work or start our own business? Time spent friendly is time risking losing to go. Ah. The busier we are with jobs and classes, the less Cove can bother us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, what are you guys thinking? I like how it lets us choose all of this. Like we're really planning out the future here. start our own business. All right. Charges people to send emails and make it mandatory. All right, we can do multiple, actually. Man, the game is just letting us choose everything we want. So do you guys want more than that? Do we just work at all? I guess it makes sense. You can have like multiple jobs. So I guess it makes sense that we can like choose multiple of these. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Starting a business at first can be really hard to make money. So might do online work work online uh rain found out that this weird thing called b-tubing <laughs> after she lost her career she follows <laughs> she follows a lot of png tubers right now <laughs> she got inspired to join it 
It's the origin story, oh no. <laughs> all right, and that was all. For your education, you thought you'd... What type of school are we joining? Remember, we can do multiple. Ugh, gotta stretch out a bit. All right. These decisions seem to be taking chat a minute to decide. Where's the Ivy League options? Unavailable. We struggled in school, remember? Um, I guess going to the private college would be the next best option. They kind of generalize it, though. Alright. Well, as chat is deciding this option... Uh, irrelevant. We have country club moms. Literally no doors are closed to us. <laughs> Alright, in that case, I guess I'll choose the private college. Alright, and that was all. And for that, you wanted to. Do we want to stay local, go abroad, travel to different places? We can decide anything we want. However, while you're deciding this, I am going to take a uh, quick break. I just have to uh, go check on something real fast. I'll be back in just a minute. So, one sec. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what I missed. Uh, oh no, I have to move countries again. Cove, and right after you just <laughs> scraped up enough money to move to <laughs> move to me for the third time in a row. That's a bummer. We should go abroad with Derek. <laughs> all right, go abroad. It'll all be happening so soon. All right. Well, if we have it all planned out, then I'm guessing we've already applied. Um, have we told Cove any of this? <laughs> that is the next option. Have we told Cove or our families? Uh, this is one of the last choices, I believe. Why would we tell Cove it's none of his business? Got it. Um... Let's see. Oh, I guess there's no option uh, to just tell our family. So, um, of course we told Liz she's our sister and moms are paying. Yeah, uh, we could either choose to tell Cove, or like, we can either, like, we haven't told anyone. Cove is the only person. Uh, we told everyone close to us, uh, like our family and Cove. Um, or we'd just been open with the situation. So Co if our family knows, <laughs> yeah, if our family knows, Cove also knows. No, no. So no, uh, we didn't tell anyone. Okay. Looking up, just saw Josh's response. 
Yeah, why can't we only tell our family? Jeez, that's a bit annoying. Yeah, I thought there was an option, but maybe uh, since we're in love with him and stuff, since we're so close, uh, the game is forcing us. Oh, I left the door open and Oliver got in and now he's ruining the cords again. Okay, one second, gotta chase a cat. All right, I told, I told him that you love him. Uh, he just wants attention right now. He's been very affectionate all day. Um, but when he starts messing with the wires, I have to kick him off. Um, anyway, yeah, you guys have been saying a lot of the same things today. All right, so I guess we just kept it all to ourselves. Now you wondered what Cove had in mind. You'd heard him consider some things in the future but it was never anything that would have counted as a real plan. Cove stopped in the middle of the street. He sighed and put you down. You were both outside of your houses. Cove looked at the ground for a moment. His mouth trembled, trying to settle on the right words to say. So, so what do you think you're gonna do now for the future? Uh, we didn't tell anyone. We've been quietly embezzling a few million from our parents <laughs> and bought a midnight plane ticket. Can I also come over and hang out with your cat? Yes, of course. <laughs> My cat loves affection. Uh, we're on the same wavelength. We're piloting the Yanger. Our drift is on points. <laughs> we can just completely be like, ah, secret. <laughs> Pacific Rim is good, I agree. It's been a while since I've watched it. All right, guys, do we tell him or not? We both have the sword, Nanji. That's the beautiful teamwork. <laughs> Which one leads to a more dramatic reveal? I don't know. Are you calling me Rain? That's not my name. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be like, hold on. <laughs> Um, I'm honest- I'm honestly not sure. I don't think Cove makes a big deal out of it either way. Um, he does tell you his plans though. He doesn't need to know? Okay. Cove closed his eyes and nodded while he composed his thoughts. He looked at you while he lifted his head. I mean... I decided on something. Well, kind of. He smiled slightly and rubbed his arm. And then his expression grew more serious. I'm going... I'm not going to decide on school or a career. Not this summer. I'm going to stay here, at least in Sunset Bird. I'll probably move out, out of my dad's place. I'll keep working my job, keep doing my volunteer stuff and everything else. I don't know. Maybe I'll know what I want, my, want for myself by fall or next year. Or maybe I'll never have a plan. Life will continue on with whatever's happening, happening, happening. And yet it took you a few seconds to notice. <laughs> I'm not gonna crush myself trying to have everything figured out by a timeline that someone else has set. I just can't do it. His brow furrowed and his tone was tense. It was clear how much expectations were weighing on him. I know that's not very exciting, but it's the best I can do right now. He laughed self ah, self by, uh, but with the way his face looked at you, though he actually wanted to cry. Um. Well, we get to spend the summer with him. not entirely sure what to press on this one. I guess we just smile or something. Smile. Thank God he's staying here and we're going away. Oh my God. Uh, 
Let's see. <laughs> Your plans sound very you. Your head tilted affectionately, ever so slightly to the side, as you watched him process your response. Cove was going to continue doing things his own way, in his own time. He exhaled, releasing some tension in his shoulders. Thanks for hearing me out on this. You knew him well enough to know that Cove wasn't feeling completely better about the way things were. Also, I'm marrying Derek for four years! Oh my god! No pressure, Cove, but if you don't have everything exactly planned out in the next five minutes and do everything perfectly for the next five years, I'm marrying Derek! Oh my god! <laughs> no matter what's happening, I just... I want you to know that you won't ever lose me. I won't really be gone. He's threatening you, space. <laughs> he heard your comment and this is a threat. <laughs> I'll still be there for you the best I can. Whether it's long distance or whatever else. Cove's whole expression softened. His lips pulled into uh, into an infection, affectionate smile. It's okay. Rain, you deserve to have everything you want in life. Oh, that was sweet, actually. Um, let's see. <laughs> Genuinely, I want you to get everything you want in life. That flew out of your mouth immediately, but you meant every word. His mouth pulled into a delicate grin. Looking at you fondly, Cove took a step closer. And he placed a hand on your shoulder. The warmth from his proximity helped you relax helped relax you. you. He spoke to you softly, wholeheartedly. He meant every word. Things are hard now. It scares me, but it'll be okay. It'll be more than okay. Now that things are up to us, we can make our lives better than they ever were. <laughs> Again, those anti-bird spikes. No! Okay, but what did, what did we do to suffer, to suffer you in our life? <sighs> carefully placing your... Uh... Carefully placing your hand on our shoulder, Cove. We might accidentally flex and shatter your whole arm. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, yeah, thanks. I still feel unsure, though. I'm always unsure. No offense, Cove. I felt reassured. Okay, chat has spoken. Whether Cove realized it or not, he said exactly what you needed to hear. He was right, and you almost felt excited, wanting to know what kind of future was waiting for you a few years from now. Deeply, you met Cove's, Cove's gaze. You nodded. At that, his expression morphed into a look of careful confidence. Clearly, he was still struggling with this topic, and you wondered what else might be on his mind. This was a start, I think, but it's not over, is it? We'll have to keep talking about it going forward. Yeah. Cove softly reiterated his promise. I, uh... mm, it'll be okay. We'll still always be there for each other. Is that good with you? It is. Cool. That's cool. I... I'll see you tomorrow, Rain. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. He pulled you into an unexpected hug. It knocked the breath out of you, yet couldn't have been a more reassuring feeling. You returned his embrace and stayed that way for as long as you could. Good night. night. He finally let go, giving you another smile. Then Cove started walking away, but you remained there, frozen in the middle of the street. You watched him and wondered, how many more times will he be able to say that he'll see you tomorrow? You hoped for countless more times. Finally, you turned towards your own house. You vowed to yourself that you would make the most of every moment you had this summer. All right. And that ends. Uh, that ends the prologue for the adult section. So, we met Baxter, had uh, some uh, negative response. And we met Terry, uh, the new uh, character that's friends with Miranda. And we got to see some people getting older. Dude, that was a long prologue. Yep, it, it is. It is very long. Um, the only short prologue, I would say, is uh, the child one. 
And the chapters get longer too. So each chapter is about an hour to an hour and a half long. Some of them are longer. Um, but there's a lot more details they fit in with each route. And like, let me tell you, in this route, everything is so different depending on what you decided to do in the story. Like once it gets to the adult section, like things really change and your playthrough can look so entirely different. How's your voice, Angie? Still going strong or dying in agony? Dying in agony? Um, I'm pushing, but usually around the 2.30 mark, my voice starts like really dipping. <laughs> so, uh, I am probably, I'm, that's all we're probably going to do today. We will continue, um, you know, next Monday, probably, depending. Hopefully things don't get canceled. But that's how it's looking. So, uh, I had fun today. This was good. Um, the adult section is my favorite part of our life, uh, followed by the epilogue. The epilogue and the wedding DLC, I think, are a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see where this goes from here. Um, can't wait to see your reactions to it. And, uh, yeah, I am hoping to get the chat, uh, the chat streaming onto the actual video done by, uh, you know, the next time you see me. But if that's not happening, then maybe next week. I don't know. I kind of broke it today. I got it set up and then it broke. So we'll try again for next time. But that's about all I have to say. So thank you guys once again for showing up today. It means so much to me. Everyone watching now and everyone in the future, thank you so much. And... Love you lots, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.